straight out of nowhere, this Marshall appeared on my workbench. Uh, <laughs> it looks like we're going to do a, uh, a biasing of the 6100 LM Anniversary Series unit. And this had um, some 6L6s in there. And we're going to be putting these here, Sovtex 5881s in there. But we're going to bias it properly. And uh, first thing we're doing is taking a look at the at the voltage I saw about 507 unladen and uh, now that I've got that looked at the uh, um, look at the um, look at the uh, grid bias so about a 34 volts neg 34 and I got stuck with Chris too here on a Friday hold on you ready let's hello what's up Chris hello so Chris is here with me his special guest star and uh we're gonna we're gonna get this going. So <laughs> you're not getting no, you can't. So so according to Chris from Cornerstone, the final authority on soap tech biasing. I wish no, according to Ted Weber. According to Ted Weber. Website. What, wait, what happened? So what are we gonna bias it at? Uh, Thirty-five will be fine. Thirty-five will be fine. I was right. As always. Ah. So we're gonna we're gonna bias at thirty, and and that may fluctuate as we add more tubes. But we're gonna as we add the tubes, we're gonna keep you know dropping this thing down and. Error on the side of safety, try not to red plate these things. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I got my uh, my plug set up here, my inline uh, 6L6, 5881, all sorts of good stuff, inline testing. <laughs> and we're, we're set up for mill amps, and, and we're ready to, to throw this on. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, being cautious today, I'm going to flip this on standby, right? I'm going to heat up the tube first, that way... There we go. That way it's going to give it time to heat up before we, we start to see any current draw in here. So this is going to be really boring if you stare at this. It's not going to do anything. Can you pause for a second? But once we feel that the tubes have warmed up all in one shot, we could go and hit this. Pause for a second. While this is warming up, uh, Chris is going to grab a speaker cable so we don't have the, uh, the finals floating now that a power tube has been introduced. I'm just going to take a, a quick look here at the bias again, and the plate voltage will be nothing. So I'm not even worried about that. So I'm going to look at the bias. We'll see a neg 38, right? And I don't, I don't set these up for bias, right? It's good to know what it is, of course, but I just, I'm, I'm going to set it up for current, obviously. Uh, plate voltage is interesting on these because when you have it on standby, it's not nothing, right? There is voltage, but it's 57. It's, there's no current at 57 volts on these things. It needs to drive like 500 volts to get any current on these, maybe 400, you know, so. We're going to hook up a uh, um, the, the speaker of this uh, cigarette-stained, coffee-stained uh, um, tungsten amp. There's no bad tube amp, so there's no such thing as bad tube amps. So. Okay, now we have something on, on finals here. So we're going to go and move this cable out of... No, we can't move the cable, so we'll, we'll just make it... Here, put it behind it. That's good. We work with what we got. There we go. Okay, now I'm now I'm gonna go and and hit this button one so this doesn't die like mid. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little old. But what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna flip off the uh, standby now. We're gonna take a look, and there it goes. Oh wow! Yeah, we're gonna shut that off. Yeah, that is awfully high. No doubt about it. We're gonna have to lower that. I don't I don't care what's on the tubes now. I'm I'm doubling this bias and then I'm working my way up. Uh that was that, that's a lot of current. That's that's no good at all. On this bias all the way as far as it will go in this particular amp, it doesn't seem entirely right to me. And it with all the tubes in it dropped to a neg forty one. I believe the American spec for these amps was like neg forty five, which was a different value than the European ones, uh for reasons I don't understand. Uh, given that the plate voltage is not adjustable off of the uh, bridge rectifier. But what that got was a drop from like 130 milliamps, which is like major cat catastrophic nuclear meltdown, brought these tubes to 60, uh, sorry, 45, 46 uh, milliamps current in the rest position. This is one tube. Obviously, I got to move my, my test gear over and uh, take a look at some others. I, I still don't like it personally. Uh, it's a little hot for me, but it's not explosive anymore. 
So I hooked it up uh, to the next vacuum tube. The correct pronunciation, vacuum. Something nobody says. And and I and I hooked up to hand tech as well. I just wanted to see what that that bias voltage looked like. It's bothering me. It's bothering me just like these these two capacitors that look like they're ready to explode in my face. I figured if they're going to explode, I might as well document this, you know, for insurance purposes. <laughs> Let's get started. So, without further ado, I'm going to put this back in standby. Let these tubes cook. Also, the I'll point out the amplifier behind me sounds like a dial tone. So, it's probably a capacitor issue. Chris is like, stop mentioning the dial tone. No, mention the dial tone we many times. We don't need to talk about the dial tone. Hold on. Oh, you... One set. There we go. I'm getting old. Let's see what we got here. This is what we call projecting negativity in a positive fashion. <laughs> look, look. I don't have any bias here. I do have bias. So I don't. But I'm I have 54 volts of bias, as a matter of fact, to be exact. But don't let this fool you. <clears throat> it's that. That's Chinese for not 54 volts. You see, now it's 48 volts. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I haven't yet turned on the um, taking it out of standby. So I've I've taken it out of standby. Watch the um, watch current flow. Look at fifty milliamps on on the second tube here. More importantly. I'm seeing the um, the bias voltage drop now to looks like um, let's get a measurement here. A neg forty four, neg forty, just what I saw last time. Obviously, the the tube characteristics being slightly different for each one. This one is looking about 50 milliamps. According to the American oscilloscope, negative 40. So bias is sitting there right at 50, right? We're ju just in at about 50, which would be more than enough for this uh, amplifier to get it at 35. Now I'm gonna take it out of standby. <laughs> and there you go, now the bias is too low, so. Yeah, there's a problem. This one is, is 44, it's 45, right? So 45, 44, 45. So that's this tube. And I'm not gonna let it sit there too long because I don't feel like burning my hands again. I'm gonna move to the next one. Much like the media today, what we're seeing here is a left-leaning bias issue. <laughs> there it is. Oh wow, that's terrible. That can't be. Yeah. Oh no, that's the, well. That one's showing 40, 40. This still, it's like you know, I I wouldn't I wouldn't run my tubes like these are soft text though, so I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. But I'm I'm, I'm hearing that hum in the amp, and I'm, and I'm seeing these these capacitors that are like, like I said, you know. Wow. So yeah, no. Something's introduced in this, but this is not this is not a tube amplifier. This is like a modern amplifier Like I said with with vacuum tubes hanging off the end to make it marketed as a tube amplifier What do you even call that? Uh, what do you call that? A, a hybrid? The lowest common denominator. The lowest common denominator, right? Or tube, yeah. I don't they even put a, a British sticker in there or something, right? Proudly made in Milton Keys. Is it? Yeah. Is that you know that's the traffic circle capital of the world. I did not, but I also know F one. Did you know? Did you know it's the home of the first Kentucky Fried Chicken in Great Britain? I did not. I did. I was there for the grand opening. I'll have you know. <laughs> Me and Tony were there for the grand opening. No, no, I'm sorry. It was Jeff. Yeah, indeed. So there you go. So 47. This looked weird, and it doesn't even look. It doesn't even look like good bias. I, and I, I know I'm. I'm being hypercritical here, but you know, for for a modern amp, <laughs> for an amp that's that's producing this with like you know like modern stuff, 
yeah, I'm not, I'm not sold. I'm not thrilled about this. I'm not good. So I'm tracing back the um, grid bias voltage across uh, the right side of C209 comes down to R213. And I have the amp in standby, right? So I'm, I'm working with 50 volts right now, essentially, right? And R213 has got 50 on one side, 20 on the other. It's got like a, what, a 30 volt drop? 30 volts across that, that little resistor. I got to take a look, see what's going on here. That, that doesn't sound right to me. It would drop 30 volts. So let's, let's have a look, see. So I've got a Heathkit Decade resistor box uh, tied across that resistor with, a, with an obnoxious value, which is still going to lower this resistance and increase the uh, bias. To what extent, I don't know. But all that's going to do is, is increase the uh, grid bias and shut down the current of the tube. So I'm not overly concerned. Worst case scenario, the, the tube stops working. So definitely not uh, a bad idea. So let's turn this on and see what's going to happen. Look at that. We're looking at 25.98. Of course, it shut off because I'm making a movie. Yeah. Hmm? 26.2 milliamps. Ooh. Yes, sir. In business. We're in business. So we have an errant uh, resistor right here. It's causing us, and I'm not saying that that resistor is, is the issue, right? But is it is possible that through that resistor we can increase the bias enough that we can drop it. Now, where's my screwdriver? Of course, it will be gone for I need it. Basically, what I did with this box by, by turning, I basically shunted this to zero, right? If I take the screwdriver and stick it in the bias now, right, I should be able to bring this up to a respectable level. I'm going to attempt to anyway. Now I'm using the pot, by the way, for those watching at home, right? So let's get this up to, to, to say 35. I know I'm being really precise for something that does not require this degree of precision, but yeah, there you go. So 35 milliamps, boom, like like right off of there. We, if we look at the oscilloscope directly behind me, you know we can see what the voltage is, and it's stabilized to. Right. So that is. Um, hold on. Yeah. So 40. Yeah, 44. And that's what that's all we really need. Just a couple of extra volts on there. Another another four neg four was was all we really need to bring this back to specification. So yeah, now we just need to find a way to, to implement this. I'm gonna have a go at that. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I mean the the resistor uh dropped down the voltage to serve this um potentiometer to bring it to exact specification. Uh having bypassed that resistor. The potentiometer sits right flush in the middle of its position required to accomplish this which means that something else is pulling down uh, the voltage and I'll tell you it's it's probably a capacitor like I said if, if this were thrown on my bench for oh my god it's broken and fix it then fine it's not what this is about it's not what I'm doing but I am going to point this out I'm going to point out this this jump that I'm going to make, and it's not advised, but it will stop the tube from exploding and melting down and melting down the amplifier, right? I'm considering this to be a temporary fix. Chris has been under my tutelage for a great many years. He's going to use my guitar here to, um, to, to see how much dust has collected since the remodel. Thank you, Chris. Also known as uh, Last Time Jordan Played. <laughs> Give it a little more. I taught you that. All right, here. here we got, we, we you're, got li the, you're live on television. We got the no. We got the metal set. 
And, and for you folks at home, I am reading Jordan's lessons to me right now. Yeah, so. all my lessons exposed to the world. So he, he did give gift me some goodies. Steffi, come here. Steffi, come here. <laughs> So that's a good thing. Another amp resurrected from the grave. Via the El Jordan. What, what's that? Oh yeah. Oh, I forgot to do that homework. You did all I mean, I did all that. Look at stuff behind me. Yeah, uh, I know. I know it's at low volume, so it, it's. You want a different not, channel? It, you want to it, go back to the other channel? Well, no, no, I'm saying it, it's not its full martially uh, in this, because you have to turn them up, but we don't want to turn it up through one little custom speaker from Mr. Adam over at Tungsten and blow his wonderful equipment up. I dig it. It's working, and the tubes, look, the tubes are not glowing red. What do they look like? I, I don't get to see the other side of the amp. Look at that. Yeah, they're pretty. One, two, three. They're all in there. Yes. So the fix is in, there's no more wires connected to this amplifier and I am looking at about 34 milliamps coming off the uh, each of the uh, power output tubes. Uh, looks like we're done with this thing. Uh, this thing is ready to go back in the cabinet. I would highly implore whoever owns this amp that the power supply needs some work because like I said, this is a fix. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this is why I work alone. <laughs> okay. Unbelievable. So, so yeah, this is where we're going to leave this. Uh, this was a short one. Um, not a whole lot of research. A quick fix. Get this amp going and out the door. And that ends this Marshall. Thanks for watching. Say thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. And, yeah, I'm never in the camera. For some reason, it's just something. I'm like the guy in on, on that show. No, no, you can't. No. And here comes Wilson. There's I have to Wilson. edit myself out. And you will. <laughs> Thanks for watching.